What's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia, back with another top 10 video right here on Fantasy Pros MLB. And make sure you like this video, share, and subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB because leading off live is just weeks away, maybe even just days away by the time you're watching this. And of course, we're going to be taking you through the best in fantasy baseball, the best in baseball wagering, the best in fun. We're just the best at the end of the day, and we want you to be along with us for the ride. So subscribe to the channel, ring that bell till it goes ding. If you want a chance to win a signed Jazz Chisholm Miami Marlins jersey, courtesy of bettingpros.com, your place to start betting smarter, not harder. All you need to do is subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel right now. Comment below in this video, and that's it. That jersey can be yours. We'll be announcing the winner of the Jazz Chisholm jersey right here on the channel. So make sure you turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes drop and you can claim your prize. And in the meantime, this video here today is about the players that I'm avoiding. I don't necessarily hate the player. I just hate the ADP baseball shirt to come go to Fantasy Pro Shop. Check it out. I'm sure we're working on that right now. But in the meantime, again, these are some players that maybe didn't have the best 2023 seasons. Maybe I just don't like the direction their careers are going in, or maybe I just don't like the cost I have to pay in 2024. So it's nothing personal. This is just business. But here are 10 players that I'm avoiding in 2024. And I think you should as well. So here we go. Let's get to the list. Number 10. And this name's gonna surprise you, Zach Gallen, starting pitcher of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now look, I've got nothing against Gallen. He had a fantastic 2023 season, and he finished third in the Cy Young race, striking out 220 batters in just 210 innings. However, it's the innings I wanna talk about. Combined with the regular and the postseason, he was up to 243 innings last year in 2023. That's 60 more than his previous high. So I'm a little concerned there, not to mention his XERA was above four, even though the ERA was 347. So there's a lot of reasons here to be a little skeptical when it comes to Zach Gallon's value in 2024 draft leagues, because right now he is going off as the number eight starting pitcher right before Pablo Lopez, George Kirby, Tyler Glass now, and even guys like Aaron Nola all of which I think are pretty much in range with Gallon. So I don't see any reason to take a shot on Gallon ahead of Lopez, Kirby, or Glass now, or even Aaron Nola, the old steady guy who seems to have big strikeout numbers every single season. Gallon has a lot of risk with those innings catching up with him potentially in 2024. And it's not that long ago that Zach Gallon was having some arm issues of his own. So I love Zach Gallon. I just hate the ADP. So Gallon, I'm fading in 2024. Number nine on our list to do not draft is Dylan Cease, starting pitcher for the Chicago White Sox. Dylan Cease was a disappointment last year, but one that a lot of people saw coming. However, he's still being drafted as a top 30 starting pitcher on the board in ADP, and he's coming off a year where he threw just 177 innings with a 4.58 ERA and a horrible, disgusting 1.42 whip. Basically, too many walks, 79 last year, far too hittable as well. That BABIP of 330 is a very high number, not to mention... The White Sox are not a good defensive squad. They were almost last in the league in fielding. And not to mention that lineup this year doesn't look great either. Outside of Luis Robert, there's not a whole lot to get excited about when it comes to the White Sox. This is a team that's kind of in turnover. And Dylan Cease has been the rumor of trades for quite some time. However, currently looking at the ADP, I'm seeing guys going after him, such as Justin Steele, Joe Musgrove. Yuri Perez, who has huge upside, and Cole Reagans, not to mention Tanner Bybee. I'd rather wait another round and draft some of those other guys instead. Let somebody else take Dylan Cease, and let me take a shot on some guys who are younger like Perez or Tanner Bybee, who both come with a lot of upside. Look, I'd rather take a shot on those young kids rather than deal with Dylan Cease and all of the grossness attached to the Chicago White Sox. We've done some pitchers on this list, so let's go to a catcher, JT Real Muto of the Philadelphia Phillies coming in at number eight. Real Muto did deliver a positive 2023 season, hitting 20 homers and stealing 16 paces. And I do understand in those two catcher leagues, having a top 10 catcher as one of your guys behind the dish makes a lot of sense. However, he's entering his age 33 season, and I just think that there's better values on the board. Guys like Yiner Diaz of the Houston Astros, or even later, Francisco Alvarez of the Mets, or Gabriel Moreno of the Arizona Diamondbacks. There's just some guys here when you get to that outer limit of catcher ones, so to speak, quote unquote, 
that I think can give you some more value. So again, it's kind of the age of Rio Muto, the cost in drafts in single catcher leagues. I'm definitely fading him. I get it in the two catcher formats, but why are you still playing two catcher formats? That's no fun. So says I. Next on our list, coming in at first base is the number seven player we're going to talk about, Cody Bellinger of the, as of recording this, who the hell knows because he's still a free agent and it's the end of February. Cody Bellinger did deliver a bounce back season in his contract year, hitting 26 homers and stealing 26 bags, hitting 307 for the Chicago Cubs. And that's really what I want to focus in because 307, that's not a batting average we've seen out of Bellinger since 2019. And folks, it's 2024. Can we believe in that? Maybe, but I think a lot of it has to do with landing spot. And in early drafts right now, we don't know where he's going to be. I want him to go back to the Chicago Cubs because I thought it was a good situation for him. Yes, he's going to give you some flexibility where he plays first base and outfield in most formats. Also, I think Chicago is just a comfortable situation. So if he re-signs there, I'm a little bit more apt to draft him as the 52nd player going off the board. But at first base specifically, he is still being drafted ahead of Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Jones, Christian Walker, all guys that have similar power profiles to Cody Bellinger and RBI and run total potential as well. Yeah, Bellinger gives you more stolen bases than those guys, but still, nowadays you can find stolen bases everywhere. And now that 2024 looks to be more of the same, why am I paying any sort of premium for Cody Bellinger who gets me 20 when I can find some steals later on in the draft? So I think I let first base come to me with some of the value of the guys I just discussed, and I'm not going to pay an extra premium for Cody Bellinger off a career year, arguably, in a contract year, especially depending on how much he does sign for, because we all know if he goes somewhere else, we've seen time and time again, players struggle in year one of big contracts. So Cody Bellinger, to me, is a dicey investment in 2024 at his current ADP. Let's continue our trip around the diamond to second base with number six on our list, Luis Arise, second baseman of the Miami Marlins. This guy hit 354 last year and flirted with 400 for a very long time. He is special when it comes to batting average. However, he is kind of empty where it goes everywhere else. He is league average or below in run score, just 70 last year, despite hitting towards the top of the Marlins order. RBI, just 69 last year. His power numbers aren't great, just 10 homers and three steals. Boo, not very good in 2024, folks. So when we're looking at a rise and trying to evaluate him, yes, he's a guy that can offset some batting average issues on Roto Leagues, and maybe he's a more productive player than you realize in head-to-head -head points. But overall, when you're talking about value for a guy going in the top 125 players, I just think there's some other value at that position that you could take advantage of. There's upside with guys like Zach Geloff of the Oakland A's and also Isak Paredes of the Tampa Bay Rays, also a solid, steady guy. So when it comes to the value of Luis Arise in 2024, I just think he's still kind of one dimensional and league average, or dare I say worse in some other categories. So just tread lightly when it comes to Luis Arise in 2024. Number five on our list at the hot corner, third baseman Max Muncy of the Los Angeles Dodgers. When it comes to Max Muncy, he might be the personification of power, hitting 36 bombs last year, driving in over 100 and scoring 95 runs for a very good Dodger team. However, he might be the guy to couple with Luis Arise because that 212 batting average is just no bueno. The year before he hit a buck 94, and my concern is this, at any point if that power starts to tail off, what becomes of Max Muncy? The contact rates aren't good. The strikeout rates are high. And this is a player that just concerns me. I understand in season long Roto where strikeouts don't bother you or in leagues where you can maximize your batting average other places, Max Muncy can be a value as the 14th third baseman going off the board. But if you look at some of the other players going later, such as Nolan Gorman, who's to say that Gorman a few rounds later can't get you similar power numbers with maybe a higher batting average closer to 240. Guys like Gorman, or even Jake Berger are going to give you similar stats to Max Muncy without the name brand value of Muncy and maybe with a little less downside of Muncy too. So for me, I'd rather pivot to some of those names and let somebody else take Max Muncy getting all hot and bothered about the Dodgers offense, which yes, is going to be great. We all know that, but we're talking about value here. We're talking about players where you can pivot and I see a better pivot here off of Max Muncy this season. Number four on our list at shortstop, Carlos Correa of the Minnesota Twins. And I feel like this kind of goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, because he's still being drafted just around the top 200 players in baseball. Stop it already. We all know what Carlos Correa is, which is an incomplete 
every single year. He never plays enough games. He always lets us down in some regard. So you might be thinking, what an incredible value. I'm getting a Carlos Correa this year. And you know what? It would seem so, except for the fact he doesn't steal any bases anymore. The batting average is hovering around 230. So yeah, he might pop you 15 homers at the end of the day. But the problem is, especially in head-to-head -head formats, the missed time for Carlos Correa and the underperforming, underwhelming numbers always seem to bite you in the end. So just do yourself and me a favor in 2024. Let somebody else take the headache of Carlos Correa on their roster. And don't let that person be you. Let's close things out here with some outfielders. Number three on our list, Evan Carter of the Texas Rangers. And I know everybody is excited about all the Rangers prospects coming through. In fact, I'm a little bit more excited to tell you the truth about Wyatt Langford, who you could get rounds, plural with an S, later than Evan Carter. My big deal with Evan Carter is I just think he's going to get found out here as he gets more exposure around Major League Baseball. Not to mention, his frame is still a little slight, so I have real concerns about him holding up and playing 150 plus games in 2024. And as the 25th outfielder going off the board, I think your expectations should be a little higher. He's going ahead of guys like Anthony Santander, who continuously put up power numbers every single year, and Evan Carter would have to not only match those numbers, but exceed them to justify the ADP over Santander, over a guy like Lane Thomas, who went off last year for the Washington Nationals or even big time names like Jordan Walker on the prospect list who we all know last year was a darling just like Evan Carter and now I think you're getting a bounce back value here a little cheaper so really this is about looking at the board and some of the names going after Carter and I just can't justify Carter's ADP over some of those names that have a little bit more track record that we can believe in are they perfect players no but Evan Carter still too much upside and not enough floor for my liking in 2024 redraft formats. Number two on our list, outfielder Cedric Mullins of the Baltimore Orioles. Now there's definitely a scenario where Cedric Mullins bounces back. He was a player that last year was disappointing in terms of power and in terms of stolen bases, but he did play just 116 games. 30 home runs in 2021 with 30 seals is what I think everybody was chasing last season when they drafted him. But unfortunately, he came up short, not just in 23, but 2022, where we have to start asking ourselves, is that 2021 Cedric Mullins, where he hit 290 with 30-30, the guy that we're never going to see again? Because so far... The stats all suggest that's not who we're going to get in 2024. His batting average has declined two years in a row. And although there was a little spike in the power numbers for Mullins last season in limited time, he could also feel the squeeze with more of these prospects coming through that Orioles system, namely Heston Kierstad, who I think is just an injury, if not maybe a big week at AAA away from taking over a starting outfielder job. So Mullins is in a precarious situation where he is easily replaceable with the depth in the Orioles system. And I think that makes him a tenuous investment this season for all of your fantasy leagues. And my number one guy on the do not draft list, outfielder Esturi Ruiz of the Oakland Athletics. Last year, whoa, what a stolen base season Ruiz put up, 67 steals, but he had just 47 runs scored. Let me say that again. How in the world do you steal 67 bases and score just 47 runs? Well, you play on the Oakland A's, that's how folks, because that offense is abysmal. He doesn't give you any run scored, he doesn't give you any RBI potential, just 47 last year as well, and five homers is not going to cut it. So this is literally a one category guy who's going to hit 250 for you and probably drag you down in a lot of other places. I get looking for specialists when you have needs on your Roto roster. But at the same time, as I mentioned earlier in this video, it's easier to find stolen bases in 2024 than we've seen in almost a decade. So why are we going with a guy like Ruiz as a top 30 outfielder? I don't understand it. You can't explain it to me. I'd much rather wait on outfield, take some shots on guys like Brandon Nimmo, who give you a little bit of everything from the New York Mets, or maybe even the huge upside of Jackson Churio of the Milwaukee Brewers. That rookie could have a huge impact in 2024 and give you five category potential and probably do it at least a round or maybe even two to three later, depending on your league. So to me, Esturi Ruiz is just a guy that I'm avoiding and not drafting in 2024. All right, everybody, those are the players that I'm avoiding in 2024, but I want to hear from you. Who are the players that you are just 
out on, you've had enough on in 2024, or you just don't like the cost you have to pay, drop the names below. I want to hear from you, and I want to hear about some of the players that I talked about. Are you with me where you're out, or maybe you're buying in? I don't know. Let's have a conversation, because conversations are fun, and this channel is about fun. It's also about baseball, and it's also about me and the Welsh doing stupid things. So if you want to be here for all of that, make sure you drop your comments below, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to let goes ding for notifications so you can be part of all of that, including leading off live starting soon, end of March, baby, with the baseball season. Can you believe it? Baseball is back. If you want a chance to win a signed Jazz Chisholm Miami Marlins jersey, courtesy of bettingpros.com, your place to start betting smarter, not harder. All you need to do is subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB YouTube channel right now. Comment below in this video, and that's it. That jersey can be yours. We'll be announcing the winner of the Jazz Chisholm jersey right here on the channel, so make sure you turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes drop and you can claim your prize. I'm so damn happy. I hope you are too. That'll do it for me, Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.